Hi there. We're back here on Main Street Living. You know, Kate, some things just never go out of style, like the little black dress, pearls, and Frank Sinatra. Yes, they are called the classics for a reason. And our next guest has perfected the art of keeping those classics live and fun and relevant. And he is a stranger in the night no longer. We welcome in award-winning singer and actor Richard Shelton. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, thank, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me along. Yeah, we're um, excited to talk to you. And I know you just released your new album, An Englishman in Love in L.A. The title basically says it all, but what inspired this album? Hmm. Um, yeah, the, well, yes, as you can hear by my accent, plainly, I'm, I'm from across, across the water there. Um, I came to L.A., you know what, with nothing more than um, a pocket full of dreams and hopes, like so many people, you know, when they went on a, go on a new voyage. And I'd, um, I have a big association, as you said a minute ago, with Frank Sinatra, a dramatic association. But I needed there to be clear blue water between me and Frank Sinatra because he occupies a lot of my acting life. But this music, this album is about me. So this is about, you know, um, the journey of, of life I was on and what I wanted to say on that journey. So in the genre of music, but offering original songs and some pop classics and jazz, um, you know, that people are familiar with, but in a fresh, in a fresh way, in a fresh light. Well, we know too that you did just get back from a performance, so we appreciate you joining us <laughs> on the show today. Uh, you mentioned that your work is heavily influenced by Frank Sinatra. Did you always sing like him naturally, or was that something you kind of worked at? Uh, no, I mean, it, it's the strangest thing. I mean, I was aware of Frank Sinatra from a tiny age. I mean, I, I guess I was about six years old in the small town where I live in England. And I saw this photograph of this boy, Frank, when, when he was a boy, uh, Frank Sinatra. And I remember saying to my mother, Mummy, who is, who is this? It looks like me. And she said, so it does. Um, and I got to about 14 and my father was always listening to big band jazz swing. Um, so I grew up with that genre of music. And I remember listening to the My Way album and I just intuitively um, got the cadence of his voice and what he was saying lyrically. And I think that that's one of the most important things with Frank Sinatra, because people talk a lot about his phrasing, which, of course, was impeccable. But he was every inch an actor. You know, he he told the story of his songs and, and he was quoted as saying the lyrics come first, you know, not to demean the music. But if you get the lyrics right, you can tell the most magnificent stories. And even at 14 years old, I kind of got that. Um, and it just so happened that my voice kind of fits in the same register. So when I came to act him many, many years later, it, it was a comfortable fit, shall we say. It, 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 um, there was a natural, a naturalness to the whole, um, to the whole relationship. Yeah, there's definitely a candid connection. So what are some of the projects um, that you've worked on that have involved Frank Sinatra? Mm. Well, there were two major ones. So one was a drama, I guess it was all age appropriate. I've only ever played him age appropriate. So I played him when I was in my early 40s in a show called uh, Rat Pack Confidential. And it started out in regional theatre in the UK. And then it made it to the West End, which, of course, is like um, Broadway um, for folks who know theatre in the US. Um, and it was a big, you know, big success. It looked at the dark side of the five men in the Rat Pack, Frank Dean, Sammy, Joey Bishop and Peter Lawford. Um, and then some years later, I played him in another drama called Sinatra Raw. And as the title suggests, it's raw as in R-A-W, not R-O-A-R, not, not raw. Um, and again, it, it looks at his life when he's in his 50s approaching retirement for the first time. And he feels redundant. He feels this is the 70s. And what am I all about? You know, I'm married and divorced. Um, it's the time of the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and David Bowie. Where do I fit in? And so it looks at those questions that I think we all face just as human beings. Um, and the narrative, he, as he sort of remembers, you know, the allegations made against him, um, the womanizing, the whole, you know, mafia connections, as he remembers, the only thing on stage with him is a bottle of Jack Daniels. As Jack Daniels goes down and the memories come flooding forwards, the, the fabled Sinatra anger comes out and, um, and the music supports all of that. So those are the two projects I, I was involved with. Very, very cool. I didn't even know about all that history with him and kind of the back half of his life. What is it about Frank Sinatra and his music that makes it so timeless? 
Oh, I think he speaks to a soul. I mean, you know what? It's so rele it's as relevant now as it ever was. So, for example, if you listen to him singing in the wee small hours of the morning, you are just about the only person in the bar. You know what I mean? Or he sings Come Fly With Me. You're up there on the moon with him, you know? he He's, it's seductive, it's real. You know, the tone, of course, of his voice is timeless. Um, so I think he... I think he he allow he he explores, you know, through his music you hear the emotions um, of uh, of what this, what what he's singing about, and I you know he can make me whilst I know his work he can make me instantaneously happy when I put on his music, or he can let me sit in my sadness for a moment. I I just think right. he's as relevant now as he as he ever was. Yeah, it's very cathartic. And I know, too, you've had an impressive acting career. Yeah. Um, you've had some roles in shows like Jane the Virgin, House of Lies, just to name a couple. But what has been your favorite role to play? Oh, Frank Sinatra. <laughs> Always Frank Sinatra. Oh. There's no question. Uh, I mean, certainly, like I said before, you know, my relationship is very much that of an actor. Um, I don't think I could, I can't mimic him, but I can evoke him, you know, through, through mm. that process of acting, which is much what, you know, Kate Blanchett did as Queen Elizabeth I, for example, or Helen Mirren as the Queen. It, it's, it's an evocation. And I think when I get into that moment and I'm able to tell the story, um, and the music, of course, is so important, it, it helps set the tone you know set the mood and the emotion of the man and i guess that's what i've tried to do you know with this album is to tell stories it's a similar i've borrowed that from him if you like you know the the um we, we have some uncanny connections frank sinatra and i um which is strange seeing as i'm from over there and, and he of course is from over here um but i've borrowed those skills if you like to try and tell some stories with this music and make it relevant um for folks today well, so speaking of your album, you must be excited to have that out in the world. And like you said, kind of a separate thing in some ways. What do you hope people get from this new album? Well, I, I hope they get, I hope they get, oh, I think, I hope they get romance. I hope they get, it, there's 16 songs in total, which is a lot of songs. But of course, you know, the thing couldn't be released because of the pandemic and there were other delays. So I added mm -hmm. some sneaky originals to it. So there's um, messages of hope, there's foot tapping, happy stuff. There's a couple of songs, I said it's about love and it is about love, but it's about every type of love. So it's about the beginning of love when it's all fresh and gorgeous. But it's also about those moments where love goes wrong because that's as important as the happy stuff. You know, unless you have the sad stuff, you can't have the happy stuff. So there's two songs on it. One is an original called Over Like the Roses. And another is by a guy called Richard Hawley, who was in a British band called Pulp. And that's called For Your Lover Give Some Time. And it talks about being aware of not taking your lover for granted, which I think is something we can all do. You know, we, we get so swept mm -hmm. up in our daily lives that sometimes it's easy to neglect the needs of the person who's most important in our lives. And the song talks about that. So it's kind of every shade of love, you know, the good, the bad and the ugly. Well, thank you so much for sharing your passion with us. And how can viewers keep up with what you're doing? Well, um, through my website, which is right there on the screen, richardshelton.co.uk or um, uh, at Richard Shelton, as you see on Twitter, or it's Richard Shelton, I think, is the Instagram uh, link. But um, type in my name and you'll, you'll, you'll find me somewhere. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Richard. Thank you very much indeed. It's been, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Wow, I feel like we got transported back to another time in that segment. So that was really special. Uh, coming up, just how valuable is an internship? We'll find out next.